Yeah, welcome back to The Breakfast on Floss TV Africa. It's now time for Off the Press. It's our segment where we analyze the day's newspapers. And we have as our guest this morning, public affairs analyst, Mr. Ezekiel Igaitok. Good morning. Thanks for joining us. Good morning. Good to be with you. Great. Let's begin with the uh, Nation newspaper, and it's all about the elections. Um, the headline reads, INEC 2022 timetable raises political tempo in Ekiti, Oshun. The writers reads, parties rev up governorship bid. Ekiti goes to poll on June 18, Oshun, July 16. Lagos, Kano, top in INEC's 176,846 New polling units, 749 units removed from churches, mosques, shrines, palaces, and homes. Also on the Nation newspaper, above the headline, ex-bank MD Atuche jailed six years for 25.7 billion naira fraud. Two dead, many injured in Ibada motor park clash. Ibejuleki Ekwe, six lane road, ready by the first quarter of 2022. Also in the Nation newspaper, Limpin Babai Jesha's trial for High Court. NPAN excluded from NPC bill public hearing. Also in the Nation, Presidency accuses PDP governors of seeking more cash to blow. They're pressurizing NNPC to fund their profligacy. Also, five killed in Ogun tank explosion. Kingmaker dies during Oba's selection. That really is a sad one. A very, very sad one there. From the nation, we'll move on next to the Pancha newspaper. Uh, making ban headline this morning, federal government borrowed 1.3 trillion naira in four years to subsidize consumers and firms. With two riders in Nigeria and Spain less than production costs, says World Bank, a fund used for gas payment settling collection shortfalls uh, that's attributed to the federal uh, government uh, uh, just below the pictorial there. A man plot fiancé's murder of 14 million naira promises a killer herbalist 5 million naira. APC PDP clash uh, as INEC here peaks date for Ikiti and Oshu Guber polls. Uh, soldiers, police, Amor Teku, Hunt bandits over killing of Undo farmers' children. Now, five burnt to death as a diesel laden tanker detaches explodes in Ogun State, and the Pew Court dismisses Jagada's case against Akeodolu's victory. Above the masthead, external reserves drop by $1.4 billion in two months. High poverty experts back World Bank Fort Buhari agency complies or compiles list. Amechi blames National Assembly for Ibadan Canal Rail project delay as travelers uh, to access four or eighty-four thousand or four thousand dollars as CBN boosts forex supplies and those are the stories on the front page of the punch newspaper this morning all right looking at the guardian newspaper queries as fg plans sale of tcn to complete power sector privatization no federal law created grazing reserves senate spokesman insist world bank report on poverty has exposed you pdp tells buhari World Health Organization traces recent monkeypox to outbreak in, De in UK to Delta. Appeal Court reaffirms Akira Delu's victory in Ondo Guba polls. Hazardous digital dump site heightens cases of cancer, heart diseases. Uzodima seeks additional states for Southeast defense Buhari on restructuring. All right, to so the Daily Independent. Uh, next, insurance sector loses one trillion naira to oil and gas. On the writing, East Warp fighters set military base on fire in Borno. Bandits raise houses of ex emo AG assembly member behead guard. Five die, two injured as fuel tanker explodes in Ogun State as federal government seeks to regulate internet broadcasting and social media. While well, the writer there resumes land swap deal in FCT after FEC approval. Although Gibo Paul Akiri Dulu wins at appeal court, Zenith Bank named best corporate governance financial services in Africa. All right, uh, Nance threatens academic activities at Unilag. Uh, Yabatek uh, gave 
ultimatum. Former bank PHB MD Atuche backs 126 years imprisonment. Onoche PDP threatens civil action against Senate President. INEC adds 56,872 polling units, moves 749 from worship centers and shrines. And those are the stories on the, you know, uh, front pages of several newspapers uh, this morning. Like we said earlier, we have Ezekiel Nya Edok, a public affairs analyst, who will be analyzing uh, some of the stories uh, with us. Uh, let's start uh, from uh, The Guardian. You know, I, I am really touched about this story. The federal government is uh, querying and plans a uh, sale of um, TCN to complete power sector privatization. This issue of privatization in Nigeria has uh, gone on for so long, and Nigerians are saying, uh, most Nigerians are saying that uh, we have not been able to see changes specifically in the power sector. How do you react to this particular story? Uh, first, I think there's absolutely nothing wrong with privatization. Secondly, if I was to look at the different managers of the economy, I'll look at uh, the organized private sector, I'll look at government, and um, maybe the, 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 the informal sector. Uh, the informal sector, there's not much we can put to it, but between government and the organized private sector, who is the better manager of our resources or of our institutions? The answer is as clear as could be, the organized private sector. So if government say, look, we're not doing well, we'd rather have the organized private sector take over some of our national institutions or assets and manage them in a more productive manner, I think that would be a great idea and I would support that any time. The problem I have as in power privatization is that we have not learned how not to draw the line or we've not learned how to draw the line between national interest and political interest. As a result, we discover that we hand over our national assets to the hands of incompetent people uh, for reasons I really cannot uh, understand. Because if we did due diligence, and we, a man, uh, I'm an architect, I mean to real estate, there are certain questions about real estate you ask me, and I'll answer you with my eyes closed. There are certain questions you'll ask me about broadcasting and I'll start talking nonsense and you will be laughing and wondering what's going on here because that's not my area. If you're going to privatization, I think it's just as simple as possible. If you're going to power, you look at the world powers, the world leaders in power administration. One, two, three, four, five. You shortlist them. You bring them down. You give them what they call, no, no, no brother, nobody wants to run on a margin that, you know, I, I'm an architect, I said that again. If I asked you to bid for something, like I want you to build a three-bedroom bungalow for me, and you come to me and say, you're going to do that with the materials I've specified for two million, I wonder if you're okay. Mm. If you say you're going to bid for 50 million, I wonder, I mean, what are you going to use? It's going to be gold or something. But there's a range that you give me. You give me maybe 3.5, 5 million, I'm like looking at, okay, the low end. You want to now go into 10, 15 million, you know, so okay, mid, uh, mid range. You know, I, I have an understanding because I know what I'm doing. So who are those privatizing our national assets? Who are they privatizing them to? They are friends, cronies, business or political associates, all the most competent people. So I think the time has come when we, the professionals, should do much more than just sitting and watching and, and take a, a more than a passing interest in the things we do. I have absolutely nothing against privatization. If anything, I believe is the way to go. What I am concerned about is the transparency of the process and to what extent we bring the experts that have the capacity, the competence, and the capability to be able to manage these uh, national assets to the end that we are the better off on the we are better for it on the long run. All right. So we know that um, you know the elections are drawing closer. Um, INEC has released the 2022 timetable um, for Ekiti Oshun as well. INEC has also introduced new polling units, 176,000 of them. Um, what do you think of these moves and what lessons do you say that we must have learned from the previous elections in the country? 
The very first thing is I want to commend INEC. I would say that it does have a lot of implications. I've contested the election twice and might yet still do that again. Uh, so what I look at as a politician, it's different from or as a professional in politics. I really hate to call myself a politician for whatever it's worth. Okay. But what I look at is even contesting the governorship of a five home state, for instance. I look at the polling units that have moved from you know, to about over 4,000. What that means to me is that I'm going to have agents in as many polling units as have been created. Because you must have agents in every polling unit if you want to be, if you want to make success of what you're doing. So the higher the number of polling units, the more I have to budget for all of them. And unfortunately, we don't have agents who are going to be there because they believe in you. And a lot of times, because of this monetization of the processes, it becomes something that it's easier for those with the deep pockets to you know, seize the situation. So we really need to still go back and look at our political processes to the end that the competent come out and not the, the, the deep pocket. So coming back to that, anybody who wants to contest presidency is asking himself, how am I going to look for agents in over 176,000 polling units? That's how they look at it. Then again, and I will say that maybe we'll start with a man like Mikey Guinea in a quiet home state because he started this process of taking polling units from some people used to have polling units in their hotels, you know. I, I'm aware of that. I, I spoke with him one on one and he told me all these things. And he said it, it can be. Every polling unit will be in a neutral station where any people, because I mean, assuming I'm, 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 I'm a, a big man in ADC, African Democratic Congress, and I have a hotel and I put a polling unit there, likelihood is that people from other parties will say, oh boy, don't go inside this man's house to fight. So some people had in the upper palace, they're not uh, in the king's palaces and things like that. So that move is very good. I even had that somewhere in shrines. But when they say, yeah, it's okay, we don't want to go into a shrine to vote for whatever is worth. So I commend INA for what they've done. And um, what they've done is proper. The only thing is that we need to come back and look at our, pro our, our political processes because it is just too expensive. All you right. Know what it means? Yes. All right, Mr. Nya Etok, since we're still talking about um, election, uh, just um, also uh, the PDP is threatening civil action against the Senate president over the confirmation of Loretta Onochi. How do you react to this particular development? I, I think that with all due respect, the Senate president should give himself a little respect. I think he should. These are one of the core functions of any assembly is representation. One of the core functions is representation. And you don't need rocket science to know that Nigerians are incensed. We just feel taken for granted, taken for a ride. It's like anything will go. And you know, they test the waters and it just goes. And they, they've called him all sorts of names, rubber stamp, everything. He should have a dialogue with Mr. President before the list co comes out. They are in the same party. You shouldn't be seeing all these things on the on the, on the reading there for the first time before the Senate. The lady in question is over partisan, and not even quietly so, but very loudly so. And and okay, somebody says, uh, I heard a man make an argument that when you come and you take an oath of office for you to be fair, and um, and I wanted to ask him which which state he comes from. I come from a, a five home state. And I wanted to ask for his state football team. Mine is Aqua United. And I want a situation where two of us hold a football match. And then the coach of Aqua United takes the oath of office of being fair to be the referee. He'll be the first person to say, God forbid, don't tell me that. How can the coach of Aqua United come and be the referee in the match that involves Aqua United? That lady, you see, you, you, one of the things, law, they say that justice must not only be done, but must be seen to, to be done. done. I hope I put that right. So, whoever is coming, nobody is absolutely impartial, so to speak. But there's somebody that comes and you're like, okay, it makes sense. For instance, there's a man, I call him again, Mr. Mikey Guinea. 
I mean, he's a human being. He's just have friends. He was my friend. You know, I was contesting election. But nobody would say anything against him because we believe he's fair minded. But when you bring a lady like uh, Ono Che, the Senate president has not done himself well. This toga of being a rubber stamp, I think it's when he leaves office that he will realize how much damage is done to himself just to be a friend of Mr. President, for goodness sake, at this stage of your life. There are certain things you should be able to stand for and be seen of as a man of integrity, as you see, as an independent person. Yes, work with the president, but the way to work with the president is not to come to the floor of the Senate, it's for you to, before something comes to the floor, floor of the Senate, advise Mr. President. And I know that if Mr. President was duly advised, he wouldn't have said the name. The people who want to say anything can be done, we can be praising about it, we, can, we don't care anything, and that's not the attitude of, the, of, of, of a leader. A leader cares. A leader cares. Okay, so really big issues regarding the economy as well. We saw a story here on the Punch newspaper that said external reserves drop by $1.4 billion in two months. And this is a report that the CBN has put out about the um, falling external reserves. We've also seen that the Naira has fallen to about 500 against the dollar at the parallel market on Wednesday, and that's from 495 Naira last week. What's your comments on these, you know, economic figures that seem to be on the decline in the country? Two things. The very first is that I'll be the very first to admit that I'm not an economist. And for me to try to be an economist is going to be like a, a dog trying to uh, meow or a cat <laughs> trying to bark. The one I can tell you is that yesterday I went for dollars and it was not uh, 100, 500, it was 505 dollars, wow. uh, Naira to a dollar. And I'm asking myself, what's the way out? A friend of mine, Mr. Kola Ayeye, said something yesterday and I loved it. He simply said, look, the question you ask yourself is the route I'm taking, is it okay? Has it yielded results? If I've done the same thing for the past six years and all I'm getting is a system that is not improving, can I just have that uh, presence of mind for me to change you know, my strategy? And I think that from the things I've heard and the things I've said, there's an absolute need for this government to change their economic approach and strategy and the next two years they can redeem themselves in a way get rid of some of these people advising you don't tell they're not telling you the truth look at policies look infrastructure is great i'm one for infrastructure but go to the constitution you're not an organized private sector you run a system based on the manual of that system and what does the manual of the a political economy say or political uh, matching order chapter seven, chapter four chapter two section 14 subsection 2b says that the security and welfare of the people shall be the primary purpose of government so if i asked my if i was to choose between railway as great as it is and social intervention so that the people are able to live first you know, what will I choose? I will choose social intervention. When the people are on ground, they can take care of the big picture. I believe that. That's why a proponent of social governance, which is a bottom-to-top approach to governance, you understand, with the primary objective of bringing the citizens out of poverty, it agrees, fundamental one, with the matching order in the Constitution. So I really think that the time has come with people that are cerebral should come into politics. We should come into politics because within politics is where you have the policies and the policies drive where we go. A lot of people coming into politics just to be able to feather their nest and become rich overnight is killing all of us that call ourselves professionals. And what we do is sit down on television and fund it like I'm doing right now. I think the time has come for us to move into the field and dare to dare. I believe that he who dares wins. All right. Okay, then again, on the Daily Independent, um, the issue of uh, the new media is still uh, making um, headlines and uh, taking the front uh, you know, stage. Uh, federal government seeks to regulate internet broadcasting, social media. This is coming all in the wake of the ban on Twitter. And of course, uh, the Minister of um, you know, Information and Culture was just before the Joint uh, 
committee yesterday where he was talking about uh, how the social uh, media needs to be regulated. I really want to get your candid opinion concerning all of this development. I'll tell you this. APC is one party that is not thinking, in my opinion, thinking well. They are not. You are two years to general election, and you really think that controlling the media is your biggest problem, and you forget how you got there. Rather than cut the people, look for how to get across to the people. You are daily disenfranchising your, the, your, you know, the people, and you think that for whatever it's worth, that you, you can, can muscle the people so that when you get to election, you'll be able to get away with it, and then you can now win again. And what, what a terrible, awful, or disingenuous strategy. Are you aware that you are probably creating a platform that by the time the food is ready, your opposition are the ones to come and eat that food? Have APC thought of these policies, how it will affect them if they are not in power by 2023? Have they forgotten so soon? They said the memory of man is treacherous. Have they forgotten so soon how the social media helped them to remove the government in power? By the time that you are, because the people are actually, they are just waiting. And they started a little too early. So the surprise element is not coming. People have a strategy, oh, you want us to keep quiet, you want to muscle us, you want to kind of restrict us so that you can do whatever you want to do and get away with the elections. Okay. Nigerians are amongst the most intelligent set of people in the whole world. I've been around, and I can tell you for a fact, they are waiting. And if they succeed in passing these bills, they are passing the bills for the new government that is coming, which is not going to be their government. You can take that to the bank. And they are going to really, really regret ever taking those decisions. And that's what disturbs me about our policymakers. You don't take a decision because it favors you for now. Think of what will happen. You know, there's one of my governors that took a decision. I will not be specific. One of my governor friends took a decision and then um, by controlling the party. And yet when another governor came in, he said he cannot control. I told him, I said, Your Excellency, you remember you did this. So you've got to, <laughs> you're not in power. You've got to let the man that is in power now to enjoy it because that was the argument you have. I fund the party. I do everything. Why should somebody else direct and control what to do? The current governor funds the party and everything. So how why should somebody say, you're excellent, that was your argument. And he said, um, you know, you know. I said, no. We should know that policies are not for the moment. They're for all time. Mm -hmm. And as a result, I want to tell APC to just slow down and bring a few cerebral people to help and strategies to help talk to them. They can get back to power if they just reverse the trend and know that right now on a daily basis, they are disenfranchising, you know, disenfranchising the people and distancing themselves from the people. We are not getting better. All the indices show that we are getting worse. Things are not okay. And not even with that, now you are telling, you are beating a child and all you are doing now, now not patting the child and saying, don't worry, please, why I beat you was this and that. He said, you are holding his mouth and say, if you dare, no problem. There was a little child that was forced. He said, kneel down, kneel down, kneel down. And the child said, when he knelt down, they said, now you're kneeling down. He said, yes. In my, on my knees, I'm kneeling down. But in my heart, I'm standing up. Okay? So maybe they think that they are muscling the people. Mm. But in the heart of Nigerians, they are waiting for whoever will come and liberate them. And if opposition is wise, like the third force we are trying to put together, we are going to use all those things that we use against the people to woo the people. And the people are going to come in in droves. And this government will be shocked at what they will meet at the polls come 2023. Thank you very much, you so Mr. Much, Mr. Zico, Ezekiel Zico. 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 We really appreciate you joining us this morning. Have yourself a great day. Same here. And thanks to our new guys doing real good. I like <laughs> you, sir. Hi. <laughs> Thank you so much, sir.
All right, we're going to break here and return to um, give you details of what happened in history. I'm going back to the year 1994 to tell you about a very famous chase. This didn't happen in Fast and Furious, it happened in real life. And of course, I'm in 2017, where there was a mistrial for the Bill Cosby's uh, rape uh, sexual allegation cases. Uh, in a moment, uh, we'll be right back to doing justice to all of those. Stay with us.